You are now listening to Out of the Blank. blank, blank. Welcome to another episode of Out of the Blank Podcast. I'm here with Kiara Pittman. Yes. Kiara, t- tell me a little bit about yourself and what do you do professionally? So, hmm, right now I am a full-time graduate student. Um, I go to USF here in Tampa. Uh, I'm, a, I'm getting my master's in social work. So I just started with that program and it's pretty intense. Um, but I just also got out of the military. I was in the Navy for eight years um, and I decided to just get out the Navy because it was getting to be too much. Um, and I realized like I didn't have anything else to gain from it. So I decided just to cut ties. Um, and Did you yeah. feel like it was becoming a little bit more mindless. Like you said, it became too much. Was it just the stuff they were doing or you just feel like you weren't kind of being the person who you were meant to be? A little bit of both. I think with the Navy, um, I joined in 2011 and even in my eight year time span it changed so much so I didn't really understand the direction that it was going I definitely lost myself uh, throughout the process and I mean I'm a creative person I have a podcast now and I just felt like my light in a sense was just dimming and I was becoming more and more controlled and not really able to focus on what I wanted to do or even who I was in well, that you, process. You know, a lot of people are experiencing this even more now. It's becoming way more frequent when it comes to younger ages. You're seeing kids come up at the age of eight, six years old saying they have severe depression. Oh, yeah. And you're like, you look at them like, what? Like, how do you have severe depression? You don't even know what the world is. You're still in the world of video games. And that's the pressures from where we've taken with technology. I love yeah. technology in so many ways. It's made my life a benefit. I would not know what to do without Instagram when I'm using the bathroom because that kills <laughs> so much of my time in there. I want to look up the statistics for people that use the bathroom and add an extra 45 minutes just by scrolling through mindlessly on their phone. Oh, man, I want to be a part of that research. <laughs> <laughs> but it's crazy because I went like, I started realizing, even though we may be more connected, like me and you being able to talk where we might not have met in real life, it's not the connectivity that is real anymore when it comes to social media, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, all these social media outlets that give these kids a horizon of options to be able to communicate with others. It's mindless nonsense. It's not people (laughs) truly caring about your day anymore. True. All true. I agree. And you do this podcast called For Realness Sake. What do you mean by being real? Okay, Um, awesome question. So yeah, For Realness Sake is something that I felt the need to create because I was getting bogged down by Instagram and social media and just how like perfect everyone was. And so me and my imperfect regular life was getting, you know, super sad, super depressed, I already have anxiety. So I was just feeling like I had to be perfect as these people portrayed themselves on Instagram. And I was tired of it. Like, where is the real talk? Where are the women, the people who are really going through something? You know, where is their representation? I think that like as a black woman, uh, there's a lot of pressure on me to be and act, you know, a certain way. You have the likes of Beyonce, who really sets the standard for us. And then, you know, you got your Nicki Minaj and your Cardi B's, all minority women, all beautiful. But there's no representation. I can't find me in that, you know? Like, they're already on. They're, they got it going on. But then you have the regular girls like me who are lost and, and really can't attach themselves to anything like that. Beyonce, Cardi B, Nicki Minaj, they got it. They're rich. You know, they can deal with their problems and we would never know. But somebody needs to say something so I decided to be that person to say hey I don't have it all together 
you know, things suck sometimes, but I'm making it through. And that's a hundred percent true too, because for me, like, I want to highlight the biggest factor here. You don't have to be black. You can be at any age. You can be anything of this sort. There are stigmas on certain races, obviously, but I've been a minority. Okay. I work at a hotel and I'm the only white guy on all Latino and colored staff. Okay. It has Mm -hmm. taken me forever to break down the barrier of just race in general, but I know what it feels like to feel out of place basically because my whole life I've been out of place. I've never really felt felt comfortable even around people that are the same skin color as me. I have, Mm. I have introverted myself for a very long time. And then before this podcast, I realized this was not a life I wanted to live. See, when it comes to like me being, I was a fitness freak. I still am going to the gym Uh every single day and haven't missed one for seven years now. Wow. It's, it's became a part of my life because I pulled it out of school being bullied. I always, always called annoying to the point where I didn't feel like my word meant anything. And I mm-hmm. started walking around and seeing it more and more. The fact that everyone's hurting in a way. And actually the start of my podcast, my buddy calling me in a severe depression about the end of his life. And I hadn't talked to him in five years. And I was like, whoa. And he was like, you were real. You weren't these fake people that were out mm-hmm. here. When someone asks you how your day's going, they're not just they're only waiting for a response for you being like oh it's going good and then they can sit there and give you all the list of crap that's not going right in their own life (laughs) and yeah i use the example it's because we've became full as people we look for the acceptance we look for the connectivity through instagram when that like comes in because Mm -hmm. we want that pat on the back we want that hug and that's because it's easy. Like Facebook started out in what, 2010, when it was all about yeah. people complaining about their problems. Like, oh, I don't have this. I don't have that. Then it turned into people like uh, taking pictures of what they were doing. And then it turned into what it is now where you're just seeing loads of memes about depression on Facebook. Yes. And everyone mm-hmm. likes it. You know why people like those memes is because they can relate to them. Exactly. We're, exactly. In, a, we're in a hurt world. It's like we're literally everyone's walking around. I use the example as wearing a mask. Mm, One of the benefits of working at my work is Mm -hmm. the fact that I get to experience kids from Romania, Serbia, Bulgaria, Haitian, everything under the sun. We get a whole diverse culture and seeing these kids go home now and they're my age and I'm, I'm talking to them and they're talking about like, there's one thing I don't like about America. And I'm like, what is it? And they say, people here are fake. Mm, wow. And I said, what do you mean fake? People are fake everywhere. And he goes, yes, but it's really bad here. You guys structure yourselves off this lifestyle where like when you ask us, like, you don't care. Nobody ever cares to know our real names. And I made it a point in my life because I like to be called Robbie. I don't like to be called Robert. I don't like to be my name messed up. I like to be, you know, treated with respect. Right. I made sure that every year that I've worked here, as soon as these kids come up, I come up to them and I want you to know me for me. I don't want you to know me as just a, a good guy or a bad guy. I want you to know me as Robbie. So I walk up to him. I'm like, what's your name? Like, oh, you can call me Chris. I'm like, no, what's your real name? Mm. Oh, my real name's pretty hard to pronounce. I'm like, go ahead, say it. If I mess it up, correct me. I'm going to get it right eventually. And he goes, it's Christo. I learned the Bulgarian language a little bit. I learned the Mm. Romanian language a little bit. I went out of my way because I saw it as they are literally doing 95% of the work coming over here and trying to connect with us and learn our language. The least I can do is help them when they get stuck on a word and try and learn a little bit about them to bring a sense of connectivity and wholeness to the group. Yeah, I feel that. That's awesome. (laughs) It it, it made it difficult because people always go, why are you doing a podcast like this? Like, why do you just choose to have conversations with people? Do you not be like, do, do people send you all their credentials and that's how you choose? No, you can send me your list of credentials if you want. But I've talked to people from Reddit. I've talked to people from all these places where they're just people fresh out of high school, you know, that don't have anything going for their lives. And all they want to do is talk about Bigfoot or something. That's oh. 100% fine because this is an escape. This is this is not my podcast. This is our podcast. Your episode that you're in right now is we can take it wherever you want to take it. I'm tired of walking around the world today and seeing a bunch of people that look like they're literally fucking hurt. 
It, mm-hmm. It's sad to see. It's like the SPCA commercial with Sarah McLaughlin. Oh man, yes. <laughs> the arms of the oh angel. Oh my God, it's the worst song to play too. It doesn't make you want to donate. It makes you want to switch the channel. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I try and tell people like we are all walking around as a gym nine to five. That's us. We're Jim that works the nine to five life, you know, go work, mm-hmm. go home. And then, you know, you have all these wonderful plans to hang out with your friends before, like when you're at work and you're, you're dealing with work. And then once it's over, as soon as you open up your front door, you don't want to do any of that anymore. Yes, that is so true. I definitely was in that mode. I would say more so when I was in the military, it's like I would work, we worked well, depending on where I was, usually about eight to 10 hours a day. And once I got home and take my uniform off and I'm just like, Ugh, I don't want to do anything else. I don't care. I just want to watch, you know, Netflix or something and just disappear because I'm drained after the long day that I've had and the mindless activity and the BS that goes on. So, yeah, I can agree with you 100%. What types of things have you kind of seen in the world today? Because you're you're a little bit older than me, but you've probably like me saying everything I've said probably makes you like, how do you understand that at this age? And I tell people, my knowledge has come from experience. I've podcasted with hundreds of people all around the mm-hmm. globe, and we all the podcast kind of fades into the same part of the conversation. And it's the fact that in society today, nobody is comfortable being truly who they want to be. Yeah, I agree. No, I think you're spot on with what you're saying. Your age has nothing to do with it. You're right. Your experience is what really matters. I grew up um, with MySpace. So that was like the beginning of the new social media. And we typically use like, you know, our pictures or whatever. But I think that's when the pressure really started for my generation to kind of like broadcast and showcase who we were. And it was always, you know, wanting to put your best foot forward. I think that throughout, I would say the past 10 years since then to now, um, it's only gotten worse. And you're right, people are not open to showing who they really are. I know it myself, like I took a huge break from Instagram from like 2013 to basically maybe 2017 um, because I just, it was too much. I was losing myself even more. And it seems so, you know, simple. Oh, it's just Instagram. But when you're trying to put on for people who you don't even know, you know, for the sake of a like or a comment or emoji, you you know, you've gone too far. (laughs) And it's... (laughs) It's crazy, mm-hmm. bro. It's it's a. I know. I said, bro. Yes, I'm gonna relate to you because I feel that comfortable. But yeah, it's, it's crazy the fact that we literally walk around and care about judgment of people that we're never going to be in our lives ever again after we just cross upon them in the grocery store. Right. And I was able to relate this to the fact that women have high standards about how they have to look when they go outside. They have to dress a certain way. They have to do a certain thing. They have to look a certain way. It takes, you know, you have to get ready before you go to the store. Instead of where a guy can just throw on sweatpants and go to the store, you have these right. types of things that I'm never going to really understand when it comes to <laughs> based on appearance but for I tell all my ex-girlfriends I tell any girl don't wear makeup around me I don't care what you look like it doesn't need to do an extra hour process let's go and just enjoy life okay because if I can't accept you for who you are then I'm I'm not I'm not that's not who I'm 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 falling in love with an act Mm. I see what you mean by that I have two sides to that though because I do I love makeup Um, And I can truly say that I do my makeup for me. Like, I mean, you wouldn't, maybe you you wouldn't know, but like, listen, a snatched eyebrow is everything (laughs) to me. But uh, I I think it can be toxic if you're doing it for other people. If you're waiting for someone to notice or if you're spending all of your money on your makeup and your aesthetics and you're not putting or investing anything into yourself personally, that could be a problem. Or I I think that it's. You're doing it the right way, though. You're doing it the way you're doing it for yourself. But everyone feels like they're pressed to look a certain way and act a certain way in society. This is where we lose creativity. You know, this might be a world of amazing inventions that are coming out, but 
sadly, they're not really, I mean, they're just like a sub variant of the same thing. The fact that the iPhone 10, then the iPhone 11, it's still mm. the iPhone. There's no giant leap in any type of technology that really changed. People are afraid to go chase after their dream that they use. I can use this example. Mm-hmm. If Neil Armstrong said, oh, I'd love to go on the moon one day, but I'm sure someone's going to do it before me, so I don't really need to do it. He, we might have never had anybody that went on the moon. Yeah. It might have took a hell of a lot longer. If you think someone's going to do something that you want to do first, or there's going to be someone that's going to get to it before you or get it done properly before you, whatever, it doesn't matter. That might not ever happen. That might be why so many things are left undone today. Yes. I literally said that in my episode. I I just created the podcast, so it just actually launched yesterday. And that was one of the things that I mentioned where it doesn't matter if, you know, we're in a society right now where you have to be the best person to do whatever. It doesn't matter if 3,000 other people are doing it. You want to be the best person out of that. And I think that's like a horrible way of thinking. Just everyone can have similar ideas and we can all do it. But if I were to stop myself from doing this podcast because there's a million other podcasts, then I'm doing a disservice to myself. I'm not living out my dream. I'm not, you know, accomplishing what I want to accomplish for the sake of these other people who I don't know who are doing the same thing. I think it's ridiculous. We all have something we truly care about. And like I said, in the first minute of this podcast, it just introduces you and it seems a little bit like an interview, but it's just conversation. I see people drop their guard when I talk to them, literally be comfortable. And I'm like, what are you interested in? And then like my buddy, he's interested in building fucking Ikea furniture. (laughs) <laughs> Who in God's name wants to deal with that mess? What I is- hate Ikea furniture. Oh, my God. He makes it's- an inventory list of all the parts that come in. He gets the whole directions, reads it over two to three times. Then he brings out all of his twos. It's a two a tools. It's about a two-hour process of just oh, getting God. ready. Then he goes, let me do a <laughs> recount real quick. Does another inventory count on a separate piece of paper, compares notes, and then he starts building the furniture. I'm like, oh, wow. God bless. <laughs> oh my god like but it shows you like i tell people you can be the worst at something but really enjoy it and i guarantee to you like that'll be something you're meant to do but when you go mm-hmm. and you do something you're good at and you hate it every day so many people nowadays do this because they're afraid of not having a paycheck we like to live and uh, suffer yeah. every single day i'm at right. fault for doing it too I'm not above it. I don't like my Mm -hmm. job that much. The only thing I like about it is the fact it connects me to such amazing people. And these amazing people that I meet, you know, I, I've, I've seen their bad moments. I've seen the moments like where it seems like we're stepping back a bit, like when I get cursed out in Spanish or something. And it's only because they're dealing with so much pressure in their own life. And I try and make sure I keep that in my head. I'm like, I know what you're really like, and I know who you really are. And I know you're a good person. And I realize you're just overwhelmed at the time. This is when you experience going into 12 items or less in the express aisle and checkout. And there's like, there's a woman in front of you that has, or a guy or whatever that has 50 items and you're like in your head everyone has this thought even me why why are you doing this right now and you want to freak out but the key is not freaking out and realizing in that moment this isn't going to matter 10 minutes from now right it's going to matter five minutes from now and you see it hit people really hard when someone freaks out in a store and starts cursing at somebody i'm Mm -hmm. like you're dealing with a whole lot of emotion right now and the problem is we're society and technology is so reliant into our lives when we put up a facebook post complaining about our problems it's not the true way of expressing yourself like you used to and used to sit down with someone and have a good conversation yeah i agree no you're right especially i i can say i've been put in that situation where i've been in a 10 items or less aisle and i've seen like someone with maybe 15 items and, and i'm like what the hell, you know, what is going on? I have somewhere to be. I'm so caught up in what I'm doing that I forget, like, hey, it happens. Maybe this person forgot that they had, you know, these extra items, whatever. But it's a mindset. It's also selfish for us to assume that whatever we have going on is more important than the next person. I think that's a part of what's wrong with society today. We all think 
or it seems that way because I can't put that feeling on everyone but it seems like everyone is just thinking of like themselves and oh let me take this selfie you know of me giving money to a homeless person totally disregarding that this person's homeless and probably doesn't want to be exposed you know or just with everything it's always about how they can make themselves look better you know how can they put their best foot forward and regardless of who they step on and to me it's disgusting but I had to get my own self out of that kind of like mindset because for a while I was that way and when you really think about it or when I really sit and evaluate like how I was as a kid or as a younger adult it was really just insecurities you know like me not being comfortable with myself in a sense and me not really knowing who I was and and trying everything and seeing if it stuck. It, it's it's hard because I always chalk up to the example, like Bruce Lee said, you know, God gave you this life because you're strong enough to walk it. Like your problems are your problems. And someone in your situation might not be able to handle them. And sad sadness of the fact is, Family dinners, all these things, the way you used to connect with your family and people that Mm -hmm. are really supposed to be intimate in your lives are not happening anymore. The average family that you see dinner seven days a week barely does it three times a week. And it's a quick 10 minute shovel the food down and go back to what you were doing. You know, Mm -hmm. we're we're all trying to find success in this world. And Mm -hmm. the sad fact is we look for it in people that have success. You know, when someone's business is prospering, you try as much as you possibly can to hop onto the fame and the glory and the ride that they're on. You try and and it's, it's not the right way to do it. You have to craft yourself out to do these things. You can't, you have to really do it on your own or it's going to lose the whole intentional aspect and drive that you need in life right exactly it's funny that you say that um one of my professors yesterday was saying that he hates asking people what they do for a living because based off of their answer you're going to treat them a certain way and I, i i too i think that's ridiculous so it's like where does the human factor come in and where do we just realize that you know, we're all people and we're all going through something. I can't remember the last time I had a a full family dinner, like with all of my family. Can't recall, maybe Thanksgiving last year. Yeah, most likely. That was basically the same time for me was Thanksgiving (laughs) and everybody was sitting in front of the TV. I had to turn it off and force everyone to sit down and have a conversation. And it was funny because at first everyone's kind of shoveling food down their throat, trying to get like it back to the TV to watch some football. And then eventually everything changed. Like they just sat there even when the meal was done and we ended up sitting there for hours just talking without even paying attention to the game. Like, whoa, it's four o'clock already. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I think that's a good thing. You walk into restaurants now and, you know, I kind of get annoyed when I see other people in their phone. And even with my husband, if we're sitting at like a restaurant, I'll make him put his phone down. I get super pissed about it now because I'm like, hey, we're interacting. This is our time, you know, but it's it's almost like secondhand nature for people to have their phone in their hand, you know, for them to watch TV. It's just we've become so desensitized to the human factor of life. I think like when you go to a restaurant, it upsets me as a person when I see someone on their cell phone, especially when their their parents let it happen to like a kid. Oh yeah, plays games the whole time. <laughs> like I remember yeah. being twelve years old and going out to dinner with my grandparents, going to good old TGI Fridays. Okay, <laughs> myself some chicken tenders and some French fries, and yes. you know, but we're having a conversation. Like we knew what was going on. We would spend weekends up at my grandparents' house. And they would make sure every time we came up, you know, after school, they pick us up on Friday, we come back home on Sunday. And it was, it was an experience, man, because we knew we're picking a restaurant, who's picking the restaurant, my brother usually sat shotgun and was always older. So he was like, hey, we're going to this place. I'm like, but I want to go, it doesn't matter, we're going to this place. I'm like, okay. Yeah, I'll sit around for the ride. But it was the connectivity, the conversations Mm -hmm. you had, you can only relate to that. A conversation at experiencing a bonfire at like two o'clock in the morning you don't know exactly what was said but it was conversation that connected you to that person you remember that for the rest of your life 
Yeah, and you remember the feeling that you felt when you were there. Like th- that's where memories come from. You remember that feeling, that sense of of togetherness. Uh, I think that's what's lacking today. I like I I don't know. You know me. I grew up with no cell phone. Like I, I spent the majority of my childhood calling my mom on a beeper. You know, and her, having her call me back on the Are house. You phone. a drug dealer? Like uh, the only thing <laughs> of a drug dealer is beepers. It's no, funny because I right. think like when we send texts nowadays, we're not truly reading what we're saying. It's so much easier to voice text. And this mm-hmm. is a problem, okay? I always say when you're voice texting, it makes it very, very difficult for your phone to sense emotion. It can't do it properly. So when you definitely say, can you go to the store and pick something up for me, please? Thank you. And like you're saying it with content, you're saying it with, can you please help me out? Your phone sends it, pick up stuff from store. And you're like, are you <laughs> yelling at me right now? What are you saying to me? Like, are you trying to boss me around? And then it completely gets into an argument. I've been in conversations where like someone sends me a text and then I get a paragraph. And then as I'm texting back, they send four more paragraphs. And I'm like, oh. like a complete idiot. Like what? I can't respond fast enough like holy shit call me if we're gonna argue <laughs> right oh my gosh I feel that 100% I had a, a almost a falling out with one of my best friends and we were going back and forth and I'm like hey just can we talk about this because I feel like our words are getting you know misconstrued and I don't want to not be friends with you anymore but it's just if you I think if you have the time to text out 50 paragraphs on how you feel, you can simply pick up the phone and, you know, tell tell me about it. But it was so hard for us to finally be able to talk on the phone because, I mean, for me, I got tired of texting because it's a lot. And I felt like what I was saying is is not coming off right. Like, I feel like I sound like a bitch when I'm saying this, or maybe, you know, she's going to take this the wrong way. And that's the fact that we have words that are shortened now. GTG means got to go. Like, fucking write it out, please. (laughs) Like, I LOL, and you're not laughing at all. Like, you're stone faced, you know, but LOL, though. (laughs) Yeah, especially when you send something awkward and then you're like, you're not really laughing, but you're like, LOL. Like, when someone sent me LOL at first, I was like, are you straight up? Like, I just pictured you comedically laughing so (laughs) hard for them falling out of your seat. I was like, well, I'm funny. But it's like when you send a text nowadays, we're becoming lazy with that. And conversations is being sent to emojis. They're now the freaking yes. millennials hieroglyphics. <laughs> That's so true. That is, but hey, don't don't get on millennials now. I think millennials, we got about, I think that stops at like 1995. So yeah, they're, been, to, basically any person under 38 is a millennial. Yeah, we need these Gen Z folks to get it together because I think they're ruining us with their Starbucks and Chick-fil-A. But Actually, one of my experiences <laughs> I was at a dollar store. So if you go to a Dollar Tree or a dollar store, if you have 20 bucks in your pocket, you're 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 basically buying the store. So literally. It's amazing, especially like a kid on a budget. So I'm I'm going in there kind of just literally sticking my arm at the beginning of the aisle and just knocking everything off the shelf into my cart. Cause I'm like, I can pay for all this. And then I get to the register and I'm sitting there and this woman cuts right in front of me, blonde woman around 30 years old. Um, and she's sitting there like, can you hurry up? Like, where's the, where's the lady? Where's the woman oh, no. and it's screaming and shouting? And I'm like, Whoa, it's freaking nine o'clock in the morning. Like calm <laughs> down. And I, it was my day off. So I did not care. I was not in a rush. And this woman literally walked away for a minute, an elderly woman. Um, started stacking up stuff and then immediately started coming back over and the woman just started berating her. <gasps> You're running this store ineffectively. You are a terrible person. I've been sitting here waiting for two minutes. I'm like, whoa. Oh my. Yeah, and then I saw them intense. walk over to Panera Bread and I realized she probably just came from Starbucks and she didn't get her triple <laughs> plump expro- espresso <laughs> frappuccino unicorn spritz or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it boggles my mind because, like, I, I hear like older generations look at me, and I, I open up the door, and they go, "Whoa!" And I'm like, "What do you mean, whoa?" And they're like, I, "A kid like you usually just kicks open the door and goes through." I was like, "That's a stereotype, so mm-hmm. bad." I was like, "We're yeah. all not assholes, right? Right, for sure." And I love old people; they're like my population, so I'm personally offended you know, that they would feel that way because I love them. 
but yeah you're right like no regard of person is is happening in a lot of situations and I don't know what that's from I, like I said before I think it deals with like their own personal selfishness possibly insecurities entitlement privilege i mean we could go on i went to school for psychology and i chalk it up to the environmental problems that someone has through their life as a child you know when you have Mm -hmm. so much emotion everyone nowadays even kids like that are not supposed to know like the cruelness of the world it's harder for a parent to shield that from them because their life is literally usually like like my parents and other people's parents they're working two jobs and they're like i don't want this to happen to you i don't want this to be a thing i don't want i want us to be connected but i also want to make sure your life is safe you have a plan b and i'm like i'm gonna make my mistakes where i make my mistakes it's gonna happen i get that you're trying to they're investing themselves into you and Uh it's the wrong way of doing so because you have to show them there's a way to do something but you have to understand that they're going to make that mistake themselves And when it comes to people, we're all like Atlas. We're holding the world on our shoulders, every single one of us. You know, Mm -hmm. it upsets me when someone compares, and I hate, I do it sometimes myself, and I always catch myself and try and stop it. When we compare, like someone says America's bad, they go, Well, what's happening in Africa? Stop fucking worrying about what Africa is. Oh, yeah. We're, we, we understand they got problems, okay? And we're trying to help there, which is awesome. But we got to focus on what we got here. And then not even what we have here in America, what we have here on the world. Then what we don't even have here on the world, we're worried about outer space when we're missing the cruelest aspect of people in general. We need to work on society. People are making this world crap. I always tell people, you know, me, I might sound like I love conversations with people, which I do, but I honestly hate people on one, (laughs) one factor, one factor. I don't like the bullshit that we're displaying in society today. That's not the real you. I can tell it when I walk by you that you're playing some act. You have something on your mind. You have something you're interested about. When I start to really love people is with the podcast. When I'm talking to someone for an hour, an hour and a half, two hours, you can tell the character drops. You see the mask get put away. And that's what I wanted to highlight. We all have something truly that we're interested in. And something like we just want to conversate again. I had so many people afterwards tell me like that was like a therapy session. I was like, you know why? You ever play the game Sims? Yeah, I have. (laughs) There's a thing called a social skill, okay? That's Uh a real thing. I have been introvert for years not talking to anybody and then when I finally talked to someone it felt like a fucking hug I was like whoa like that felt so good I I wanted that and they're like that's all you needed it was just a good way to conversate and open up to someone you know we become so overwhelmed nowadays like me I try and catch myself in those moments when I'm super like really like in a rush or aggressive and I feel like I should just yell at the person in front of me. Uh I had it it happen when I got a flat tire from hitting a nail and then got my tire fixed, paid for all that. Like, thank God it's over with. Then three days later, my other tire went out because I hit another nail. Oh no. Yeah. What's up with the nails? Exactly. That's what I said. Some dude was, must've been dropping them in front of me while I was driving. Yeah. I literally caught myself in the middle of at the mechanic shop, like rushing them, telling them I need to get this done. I need to get this happening. I need to get. And then I, I literally was like, you know how long it's going to be? And they're like, we'll get to it as soon as possible. I stopped myself and I realized, holy shit, you guys can literally keep me here forever. You guys hold the power right now. Yeah. Also, yeah. I'm being an asshole because I experienced a severe overwhelming problem that is so immediate we're not thinking about the long term, you know, Mm -hmm. when you don't get that Starbucks Frappuccino, when you don't get (laughs) that thing that happens, you immediately think that your life is going to be crap for the rest of your whole entire existence. And it's (laughs) going to be affecting you that minute. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. It's definitely a dramatic world right now. I like what you said. I think that to emphasize on that, we should probably, or society as a whole, should probably work on themselves. Like, it's so easy to say that the world needs to be fixed, but the people that live here need to be fixed because clearly, you know, we're not doing something right. Somewhere along the line, I can't say when, but in my own life, I can say, you know, 
you got to turn it. It can't just always be about you and what you have going on. As a kid, I was never, I would say, encouraged to be honest about my own feelings. Um, I spent a lot of my time with my mom just assuming that I had an attitude, not really like asking me whether I did or, you know, what, what specifically is going on, but just like, oh, she's mad or, you know, she's the grouch or whatever. So it really took me growing up, learning who I was, being in therapy to this day <laughs> and honestly like decompressing and getting all of my emotions out. I've just been so pent up, you know, over the past, the course of my life to where now I recognize what is wrong or, you know, different or difficult or what issues I have for myself. And that kind of brings on an additional amount of empathy for other people. But it had to start with me. I could, you know, hustle and bustle through life and think, oh, everyone, you know, just thinks I'm pissed and I'm pissed at everyone and I hate people and, you know, fuck you or whatever. But it really yeah. boiled down to like me learning who I was as a person and then saying, hey, I'm human. They're human, too. And not forgetting that just like I have problems, the next person might have problems too. So keep that in mind when you're dealing with them. This it's, is a know. this is a problem with actual therapists that truly are in it to try and find out what's wrong with someone. Is mm-hmm. when the after the first two sessions, they realize this person's just coming in there and just explaining their problems, not actually having anything wrong. They just don't have anyone to talk to. And right. I, I've I've been to therapy before. I've tried it, and all the woman did was sit there the whole entire session and listen to me complain about my problems. And it helped. It was a way of connecting where I felt like I couldn't connect to anybody. And yeah. one of my best friends growing up, his mom was a therapist, and I had her on my podcast. And I was telling her like she's what I call a real therapist because after mm-hmm. two sessions. She goes, I can't help you. I'm going to move you to a different person that might be fixed for what you're looking for. And the person goes, what? And they go, you're just in here looking for someone to listen to you about your day. I'm here to help you if you have a severe problem. If you want to call me and you want to conversate like all people should be doing and not consider it a job, then call Mm -hmm. me when I'm not working. Let's talk. Let's go get a drink or something if you want to drink. You know, I don't want you to feel like you have to pay to have someone listen to you because I'm more than happy as a good person to listen to you on my own time because we're wow. all sharing this world once, like all here together. And I said, doesn't like, don't you care about money though? She owns her own like wellness center. She's like, mm-hmm. I care about people. Yeah. Wow. That's beautiful. I agree. I think that, you know, it's, I'm, my ultimate goal is to be like a licensed clinical social worker where I can practice uh, therapy. But I do think that to a certain extent, you do have to be willing. Um, like I've been in therapy off and on for my entire life. And sometimes it can be uh, more of like for the patient or the client, it can be more of like a pat on the back or like a a band-aid, like, um, you know, you want someone to console you and, and tell you that you're going to be okay. But truly therapy is a mirror. And, you know, if you're not seeing yourself for what's truly going on and you're not trying to fix yourself, then it's really pointless. I mean, let's just be honest about it. You can sit and talk, you know, for an hour and a half and I can take your money, you know what I'm saying? A hundred dollars an hour or whatever but what are you truly gaining from it? If you're not trying to fix yourself, which it all boils down to what you're trying to do for you. If you're not trying to do that, then we're just, you know, having a conversation. So kudos to your therapist, to that therapist for, you know, having that conversation and really encouraging the person to say, you know, whether they really need to seek therapy or not. That's amazing. But there are a lot of people out here who are just like, kind of going to therapy just for the sake of it but not doing the work themselves so it's like so coming from a therapist perspective it seems like they're just a lot of them are worried about the money they just want the paycheck they'll be fine just to sit there and act like they're writing notes rather than actually taking the time to listen and that's terrible and it's it sucks you know i experienced it the only one time i a couple times i went with the same therapist it was like wow you're not actually really giving a shit and oh, I tell people, like I have people come on here and they go like, 
uh, and they start talking about problems. I'm like, let's talk about them. If you want to fix them, let's, let's, I, I can, I can give you advice. Okay. But don't take, I tell everybody, don't take anything I say, just throw it out the window. If it doesn't mean anything to you, I don't, right. it doesn't bother me, but I'm gonna, if you need help and you're asking me for help, I'm more than happy to give you some advice, but you're the only one with your own keys to your life to drive your car. Okay. You can, you can choose if it takes a left turn or a right turn. I can just point you in a direction. I think you should be going, but don't right. follow my rules. You have to truly make your own mistakes and do what you have to do. to feel like you're chasing this. I, I every time I say the word, it makes me kind of kind of question it only on the concept <laughs> of how ridiculous it sounds, but uh -huh. destiny in a way. I like that word. Why don't you like destiny? Because when you say destiny, it makes it sound really, really mystical. And whenever I think of mystical, I think of like false reality, like not really being real. Like this is why like mysteries, like all these cryptids, zoology, all these types of things that people like uh -huh. religion where it comes into mystery, it doesn't have sufficient evidence. But I think with destiny, you have evidence of this thing that you're meant to be. You know, it usually mm -hmm. it usually hits you later in life. I've been lucky enough to hit it at like a young age to feel like this is what I'm meant to do. This is what I'm meant to just to talk to people and just and try and have just conversate with everyone. I mean, we share this world together, okay? Mm -hmm. we yes. walk around not talking to each other not taking an hour to get to know the people that are closest to us our neighbors our family members or just random stranger on the street that you might be able to connect to i made it a mission in my life to start doing stuff like this wow so you've really taken on you know what you're supposed to be doing or what you felt you need to be doing very early and i think that's awesome because it took me a while to come into my destiny um I, and i do like the word destiny i think it, it's meaningful um but yeah i i walked around i mean shoot i was in the navy for eight years so obviously i didn't know what, what i was trying to do <laughs> but uh once you figure out what that is you know you're golden you can just you can do it you cut out you cut out a lot of the middleman you know, a lot of trying to figure it out and you went right into it. That's amazing. I, I, I really admire you for that because it took me a while to get to this place. Um, and even now I'm wavering in it to where I'm like, dang, I know it feels right. You know, I know I really want to do it. Is it going to be, you know, everything that I want it to be? I, I don't, I don't know. I'm still at that sort of crossroads. I think that, um, me taking a leap of faith was getting out of the Navy and kind of figuring it out from there. So now I'm kind of just like, you know, fingers crossed and hoping that it works out for the best. But what do you feel I, like your goal or destiny in life is? Um, Honestly, like I want to, this is going to sound so cliche, but I really want to help people. Um, I've always uh, seen myself as a helper. I don't know in what capacity, like I said, I, I want to, you know, do like clinical social work. So helping other people. Um, but I think that everyone deserves to see the most positive side of their self, but truly not like the superficial, Oh, I'm great. And everything's awesome, but truly see the good part of who you are and, and, you know, run with that. So if I could just like motivate people and, and help them and, you know, expose myself and self-disclose or whatever, you know, in hopes of, of giving them something. I, I don't know. I just, that's what I feel most strongly with. So. It's, it's one of those things where you got to go, <sighs> like it's, it's it's a lot it's a lot to yeah. take in it's a lot for people to understand the concept of you said it earlier you don't know why um people are starting to feel this way and yeah. it's easy it's easy we model ourselves off celebrities we choose mm -hmm. like you were saying in the beginning instagram you're seeing all these people that are making you feel like crap because you're not doing anything like that in your life it's because you're sh you're sh nobody's putting a bad picture up on social media of like, course not. Yeah. I follow real bodybuilders. I follow real people because I have a six pack and I know it does not stay around 24 seven. When I, post, right. when I post, all right. Okay. When I post a gym, a gym picture, a six pack picture, I tell people this is 
this is 60% lighting, 20% nutrition, and 20% hard work. Like if you if you cut out bad food from your diet, it's, it's going to change your body. It's going to make you feel better. And if you work out, it helps. But I don't keep that six pack year round. I drink, a, I mean, I work out extensively every single day and basically put myself to the point of breaking to work out and get a body like me because I suffered from being bullied for being overweight in school, which is the reason why I even decided to go into education system was to be a social worker and help kids that were dealing with being bullied and all these types of things. But I realized it's not just kids being bullied. It's everyone's being affected. We're all feeling like we're pushed down and our voice doesn't matter. So when I post a picture up like this, I tell people, when I drink a soda, when I drink a water, when I drink anything that adds any, if I even eat a meal, you're seeing me at my prime when I put up that picture right after I just got done working out. I haven't eaten and I'm shredded. Okay. I probably, I might've just gone to the, I might've pooped. Okay. I lost like 10 pounds. (laughs) So you're seeing me at my complete best. You know what I mean? But it doesn't stay there 24 seven. Like I tell people like, stop believing in all these beautiful pictures you're seeing of all these bodybuilders that use these types of photo edits, follow realbodybuilders.com. The guys that put up a six pack uh, picture and then they say 30 minutes after or 30 minutes after I just got home and ate and it's showing them and they got a giant gut to them. And they're like, it doesn't stay there. (laughs) Food bloats you up. These things happen. And it's like, like a lot of people gave Jason Momoa like a lot of flack for um having a dad bod. And who was that? Jason Momoa? Who is that? Is that the um the Aquaman guy? Oh yeah, yeah, I love him. Yeah, mm-hmm. I I know he's he's an amazing body. I'll tell you that. Like I'm not gay in any aspect, and I tell people, but like. It's because I understand when I say he has an amazing body, it's because I know how hard it takes to get a body like that. I know the the amount of effort, the amount of restrictions on your diet, the amount of training you have to go through, the types of workouts he had to do. And that's what I admire because like Christian Bale, very good at weight transformations in his acting roles. He went from 146 in The Machinist where he looked like a Holocaust survivor, actually almost, almost died. And then he bulks up like to 200 something playing Batman in Batman Begins. Like he's literally gone through such weight transformations. He played in the movie Dick Cheney and he was like 230 something. And then he dropped down to uh, 196. Like he puts his body through hell because like I admire the types of people that have that drive to do something like that because that's that's craziness in a way. And it's seen as crazy because you're literally – doing so much for just a a job or just a thing. And I'm like, it's more than a job to them. That's their life. That's their passion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I can tell that you're passionate about it too. So that's good. I, I'm very off and on in the gym. Like sometimes I get a gym bug and I'm in there for six months and then like, I'm not, so I don't, I don't have that kind of uh, passion for that, but I think that's cool. But I, I like more what you said, um, with why you started with the gym and you know I was actually bullied I would say like my freshman year I had a bully that was like really pretty much obsessed with me um, and because of that I think I, that's if I'm really thinking about it that's why I fight for the underdog so much because I didn't have anyone to really talk to about it even you know my friends that I did have Uh, I would say, like, she's always messing with me. And they would just kind of be like, well, why? You know, like, what is it? What what is so, you know, difficult or concerning about you that she's, you know, bothering you? And to this day, I I really don't know why. She probably had her own issues going on. But it just seemed like everyone that I spoke with, um, you know, whether it was my mom or my friends or whoever, you know, they kind of just all gave me the same answer, you know, like, well, don't let her, don't let her mess with you, you know? And it's like, um, I'm 13. I don't, you know, I don't know. She's older than me, whatever. Um, but I think that's part of the reason why I, I do go for, I call them like the unconventional, the different sort of person, because we're the underdog a lot of the time you know no one is no one really understands what we're going through very introverted um you know very much a pleaser for others making sure everyone else is taken care of but sort of neglecting myself in a way for years um so yeah I I really do think that's a part of why 
I've chosen this path and why I'm so big on like true empowerment and true positivity and not just superficial. Let me say my affirmation real quick and, you know, still hate myself on the inside, but truly love, you know, who I am and what I'm doing and, and encouraging other people to do the same. So, yeah. It's um, hard to believe what, like, what you're saying to yourself a lot of the times. It feels like you're saying it, but you're never listening to it. Like, for me, you know, I've had I've at fault at times for being like, don't worry what others think of you. But every day I constantly think about what others think. Right. And it's the reason that keeps me pushed into the gym. It's just you have to take it in small strides and steps, but you have to understand that, you know, we're all suffering with affliction. When you get the best wisdom from somebody, you know, a lot of the times, cause they went through it too, but they're also still going through it. You just sometimes need an outside perspective to make your whole mind change on things. Right. No one needs a, a martyr, you know, a martyr is never, never glorified. It's just, we need someone to be honest about what's really going on. Like it's not enough to, I hate when I see on social media where there's like memes of positivity, you know, say this three times or, you know, repeat after me. It's just like, but do you really believe that though? You can say I'm awesome. I'm smart. Everyone loves me. But do you honestly, like, do do you really think that for yourself? And if not, then it's pointless. It's, It's not enough to have superficial, uh self-love like come on love yourself for real or just quit because it's 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 pointless to me like what is it why do you care you know why should it matter to someone else how I feel about myself in a sense like you know what I'm saying why do I have to prove to you that I love myself if I truly do there's nothing to prove you understand? I, I... Yeah, it's like literally we are putting so much faith and reliability into c- celebrities nowadays. And then when they get something happens to them or they do something crazy and you hear it on TMZ or all this stuff, you immediately think like, oh, that person's horrible. I was following a false yeah. idol. It's like, no, they're people. They make yeah. mistakes. <laughs> Things happen. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And regardless, just like you want you know, you, you wouldn't want anyone to call you to the carpet, you know, how you're calling these random celebrities out. So it's just, what would you do in that situation? I, I totally agree. We feel like we don't have to pay the price for the actions that we do. I, I, I feel like the way we choose to be comfortable, we choose not to go experience the world anymore because we're afraid of hurting somebody. We're afraid of being who we truly want to be. And we're also really, really at fault for being comfortable. I mean, we don't ever want to break out of, out of that comfort zone when sometimes that comfort zone is holding us back from just a moment or just a lifetime of greatness. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not, I mean, people are literally watching other people live their best life in a sense, quote, I, cause I hate that term, <laughs> but, um, you know, you're not doing anything. You're being a, a critic on the couch, you know, saying, oh, look at them. They're not doing it right. Or, you know, their body is terrible. But there's in Thailand somewhere, you know, really living it up. And you're on your couch watching Netflix. But somehow you feel entitled enough to speak on them, to judge them. You know, it, it, do it for yourself first. You know, like get out there. And, and really, if you get you something that you're interested in, you won't have a lot of time to focus on what someone is doing or isn't doing because you're, you're doing you. You got to, yeah, you literally have to live your best life. You can't, you can't look at all these people that have opinions on what you should be doing. Oh, you don't have this. Like we make constant judgments in the world today. You know, we're always constantly comparing. Like someone's always pulling out the ruler. Someone's got to measure something. And I'm like, <laughs> look, why are you worried about why they have this much stuff and why you don't have any of this stuff? Why don't you understand that he's a person? He's probably got some things that aren't right in his head. And he's also probably got some things that like, you know, that are good in his life. You have to realize you're going to be you. When you come onto my podcast, you're telling me the story of, you know, you. You're not telling me some fake other person's life. You know, we can go off on tangents about people through history if you want, but it's really, you're telling me your thoughts, your emotions. You're literally telling me the history of you. 
And yeah. I found that was easier for me because I can't, I mean, I can read, but I don't like reading. So it's easier <laughs> for me reading it that way than getting it from a biography where it feels like you're just blandly saying things. I like to sense the emotion. I like to hear the conversation. I like to hear where your thoughts go. I like, I like to know all these wonderful things that people are afraid to express out in the world today. Yeah, I, I that's awesome. I think you're going to be awesome with whatever your final goal is. I know you said social work and things like that. So you're on the right track. So really doing some amazing things. Um, you're super young, too, which I think is also amazing because a lot, like you said earlier, a lot of people your age aren't really into it right now. They're really into self. So for you to be aware and conscious of other people and, you know, emotions and feelings, you're you're doing very well. I have to give kudos to you for that. The key that well, all my like thinking, all this type of stuff is just stuff I've been experiencing through meeting all these people from Jamaica, Brazil, all these other countries. I've podcasted with people from around the globe. You know, I'll get up at one a.m. just to be able to conversate with someone in the United Kingdom, and wow. it's only on the concept of the true key to understanding or knowledge where we say knowledge is power is all Mm -hmm. about being open-minded and optimism. It's about changing your perspective. You have to do this or you're going to live in a world that feels like it's literally putting you down every step you take. Yeah. And like I've said before, it's all about self though. Perspective is all about how you see yourself too many people are into blaming others being a victim is you know saying this is why because of what so and so did and so and so did and and that's why the way you know i i am the way that i am but no at some point you have to take responsibility for that and realize that your own bias your own insecurities your own you know expectations of people that are constantly disregarded have you know, it, it all starts with you. It's all, it all goes back to you. And until you fix that, you're always going to have this tainted sort of view of what life is. But once you do, you'll be able to see, hey, like life isn't that bad. People are not, you know, inherently evil. It's just a couple folks out here that are making a bad name for all of us humans, you know, and you can really live a more positive life. especially we live in a world that we think the world's so crushed and hurt and it's just this monster when really right under the surface is something very very beautiful and it's just it's just in all of us you know we're all diamonds in the rough there's something in us that makes us want to connect makes us want to come together and help each other out but we're choosing to push it aside because it's it's not the norm anymore and i want to bring that back Mm mm-hmm Yeah, well, I think you're on your way to doing that just by, like you said, having conversations with so many different types of people. You're on your way and it's all about connecting people together. Like I knew zero about, you know, what you had going on, but I took the time to go and listen to some of your podcasts. I'm like, oh, okay, because I was trying to get sort of an idea of, you know, what content you have. And it is honestly super random. I mean, you... <laughs> that's what I tell people. You can't <laughs> get a minute into my podcast because next thing you know, we're talking about something completely different. Like, how did they get here? I missed something. Yeah, but it, it, I love it. I really do. It's a, a, a awesome concept um, and what you're doing. And you're in your own way. You are changing the narrative for you. You know, and hopefully that that goes abroad and other people who listen to you, they'll be able to see a different side. I mean, I haven't spoken with anyone, you know, from Bulgaria, but I imagine that of everything, we probably have at least one thing in common. You know, I think that's what people tend to forget that even though we're all different, we all have so much stuff going on personally we can all identify with at least one thing whether it's a feeling you know a tv show music whatever we can identify with each other and instead of trying to always you know point out how we're so different maybe start trying to see how we're more alike and that might help build more relationships and get people out of their own heads and their own comfort zones and find and meet you know more people and it's, that'll help the world. Exactly. The, the biggest change we can do is just find that connectivity that we all need. Yeah, exactly. Well, thank exactly. you so much, Kiara, for being on my podcast. It was awesome talking Yay. to you. 
<laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I really like your podcast. I hopefully you stick with it. I know you're just starting out, but it's I, I definitely think you have a good concept of it and you are a very awesome individual. And I want to give you here <laughs> a minute at the end kind of to promote your stuff so people can see your awesome content. Okay, cool. So you can find me on Instagram at Kiera is K E E A I R U H uh, underscore and my podcast for realness sake dot com and also on Instagram as well. So if you feel like you are an unconventional person and you want to speak about life and your journey, hit me up. Well, thank you so much, Kiera, for being on this episode of Out of the Blank Podcast. Thank you so much, Robbie. You have an awesome day.